Good morning, boys and girls of Grade Nine. Good morning to all the faculty members, the teachers of Grade Nine, the supervisors, coordinators, and dear parents. Uh, it's indeed a pleasure to inaugurate the annual exhibition. Uh, pertaining to personal projects done by students of grade nine. Indeed, a lot of uh, thinking, challenge, and research has gone into your projects, boys and girls, and uh, that is highly commendable as you are m marching upwards towards IGCSE boards in grade 10 and you've just completed your SM paid and onward to IB so actually you've reached the base camp before you reach the summit of IBDP IBCP and move on to universities so this exhibition plays a very important part in the process of your thinking, your analytical skills. In grade 10, you'll be doing uh, IB MYP designed program of personal project. And all these exhibits which you're putting up now are stepping stones where you'll get a certificate from IB for your personal project. It's a, well, a very important milestone in your ac academic career. The key focus of having this activity is to instill a love of learning in each student in making each one of you a lifelong learner involving you in activities beyond the four walls of a classroom as you deal with issues which are related to the world current issues and so many other personal issues which you think should be addressed and that is what we call holistic education through these projects which you have put up you learn from your research your actions you test your capacity your inter intellectual capacity to go beyond ability to investigate, ability to be inquisitive, curious and be creative. Your exhibits include something called STEAM, Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, Maths and involving a commitment towards technology and artificial intelligence. You're also developing new skills towards learning through your exhibits. Indeed, there are so many plus points. I take this opportunity to congratulate and say thank you to your teachers who are the moving force who motivate you who inspire you and guide you and in, in these pandemic times the role of parents has also become very vital as you're doing research and work on your projects from home parental guidance also comes in so 
the African uh, proverb, it takes a village to educate a child, has come to be so true for us. All are involved to draw out the best from you, to show you the direction. But you have to do the walking. That's what education is. And going through your projects, which I've received, I'm completely impressed. Well done. Well done, boys and girls. Keep it up. You have lived up to the school motto. Virtue at labor. I am overwhelmed to see the different projects you all have taken up related to global issues, local issues and the research which you have done, how you have analysed your topics and the skills which you have developed, leadership skills, speaking skills, art and craft skills and even teamwork. Yes, it's phenomenal. Boys and girls, you indeed deserve a pat on the back. And in these pandemic times, doing this, these tasks, it's indeed, I can say, a Herculean task, a challenge. And that's what makes life wonderful. I, sh I should say, boys and girls, you have been involved in raising the bar the bar of excellence, you are raising it higher. And uh, thank you teachers, thank you teachers for building the self-esteem and confidence of our students, drawing out the hidden talents, teaching the, val the values of perseverance. So all the teachers your dedicated teachers, professionals, I thank them all. Hats off to all of them and your parents. And of course, to you. With these words, I wish you all the best for your exhibition. Keep thinking, keep planning, keep smiling. As you face challenges, there should be joy and effort. Congratulations. Good morning. Uh, my name is Angela and I will be talking about plastic packaging for my grade nine exhibition. Now getting in straight into the topic, how is plastic packaging contributing to plastic waste? Plastic packaging is extremely wasteful and impacts Earth ecosystems on which we depend on. Due to poor product design and lack of political infrastructures, the majority of plastic waste is sent into landfills or disposed of into the environment. 9.2 billion plastics have been disposed into the environment and only 9% are used and are actually recycled. Because plastic isn't biodegradable, every piece of plastic that has been made on this earth is still there. Whether they turn into microplastics or not, plastic that is either dumped or washed into the oceans are consumed by marine animals. Now, how is plastic waste bad for the environment? One example is that a small percentage of plastic waste is addressed with thermal destruction, burning it. Most of the plastic discarded end up in landfills or somewhere in the environment. Thermal destruction releases toxic fumes and chemicals into the environment, reducing air quality and creating a public health risk. Now, majority of packaging, plastic packaging, has a big part in businesses. So the majority of businesses and companies are not following today's standards of saving up plastic waste, even though most customers want to do their part to help the environment and are aware of the impact of their purchases. So. Why do companies keep using plastic waste, even though it distresses their customers? Well, there are many reasons, but it is mainly money. 
Plastic has been said to be one of the cheapest forms of packaging, and that shouldn't be an excuse, as technology and resources available today have more eco-friendly packaging options available than ever before. They need to get rid of the notion that plastic is the best choice and move on a more responsible direction. Of course, not all big corporate decided to ignore the plastic waste produced by plastic packaging. Companies such as Indomart have decided to charge you extra for using plastic, and that encourages their customers to bring their own bag. Now, how can we help as a citizen? Well, with a few steps, such as simply bring our own tote bag when we're shopping, or avoid stores that do use plastic packaging and avoid single-use plastics such as straws. There is already an alternative to plastic straws such as metal straws, and using metal straws can help the plastic waste movement by a ton. Replacing the Tupperware with glass or steel containers or recycling plastic Tupperware and using it over and over again will also help the environment. And that concludes my presentation slash exhibition for this year. Thank you for all listening. And I hope you all have a wonderful day ahead of you. Good morning. I am Ashima Gupta. And today I will be exhibiting my presentation on the impact of COVID-19 on the growth and survival of multinational companies. What is a multinational company? A multinational company refers to an artificial person created by law with a separate legal entity, perpetual succession, and a common seal. This means that this is a separate legal organization which is responsible for the business activities in multiple target locations, except the home country. Multinational companies can be in various forms, such as franchise, joint venture, mergers and acquisition, and interrogation. Now that we understand what a multinational company is, it is crucial to understand what, how COVID-19 has impacted them. Since there is a lack of customer and, customer and seller interaction due to the rules towards COVID, towards social distancing, businesses are failing to meet their objectives. Although there are demerits, some multinational companies continue to flourish due to the reduction in fixed costs, such as office, electricity, and lighting. Online firms such as e-commerce shopping facilities and techno working is of now convenience during this time. Adidas's net sales show a positive correlation and a constant, constant rise in the years 2000 and to, to 2019. But there is a sudden drop in the sales in 2020. There is also a drastic drop in the net income of Adidas in the year 2020 as compared to the exponential growth in the previous years. As, the, as compared to the reduction in net sales and net income by Adidas, the online platform for e-communication, Zoom, is now seen to have an extreme rise in the downloads in 2020, as compared to the quarters of the previous years. These are the sources I have used to base my findings on. Thank you. Hello, my name is Beverly, and I will be talking about animal testing and my product is a website. My global context is an inquiry into scientific and technical innovation. I chose this topic because animal abuse in general is a problem that happens in countries all over the world every day. Experimenting on animals is very cruel and unacceptable because animals are forced to live in cages, isolated and traumatized. So animal testing is a scientific experiment where animals are forced to go through something that will cause them pain, distress, and lasting harm, like injecting animals with harmful chemicals, exposing them to radiation, surgically removing animals' organs to deliberately cause damage. So the problem is 
Uh, delivering torment and enduring on a lot of animals is very cruel and ineffective. Experimenters have little knowledge of how chemicals carry on the animal's body. Around 115 million animals like rabbits, rats, hamsters, etc. are being killed in laboratories. So these are some of the procedures that the animals have to go through. How does animal testing relate to biology? The utilization of animals for scientific purposes is both a long-standing practice in biological research. Scientists use animals when there is no other option to study humans to become familiar with health issues that affect both animals and humans. So there are alternatives to animal testing like human tissues, as it uses like skin and eye models to replace animal testing, and computer models as scientists can utilize computer models of heart, kidney, etc. to conduct virtual experiments. We can end animal testing by buying cruelty-free products because it will leave animals unharmed and in their natural habitat. Educate others because a wider range of people will be educated and will take actions. And donate because we can help various organizations to help buy animals that are confined in labs and other animal cruelty. So in this page, I have created a donation for the animals that are suffering in laboratories and other places, and also protecting all animals that are facing severe cruelty. So we should all save animals and thank you. Hello, my name is Bruce from 9E and my topic is types of computer networks. Number one, local area network, also known as LAN. This is the most common network type yet. LANs connect groups of computers and move voltage devices together across short distances to share information and resources. With routers, LANs can connect to wide area networks. Number two, wireless local area network, also known as WLAN. WLAN functions similarly to LAN and makes use of wireless technology such as Wi Fi. These types of networks don't require devices that rely on physical cables to connect to the network. Number three, campus area network, also known as CAN. This type of network is larger than LANs, but are smaller than metropolitan area networks. CANs are typically used in universities, school districts, or small businesses. They can be spread across several buildings that are close to so people can share resources. Number four, metropolitan area network, also known as MAN. This type of network incorporates elements from both LAN and WAN. MANs cover a specific geographic area, usually a town or a city. It is maintained and handled either by a single person or a company. Number five, wide area network, also known as WAN. A WAN connects computers together around the world. Computers and low voltage devices are able to remotely connect to each other over one large network no matter the distance. The internet is a basic example of WAN. Number six, virtual private network also known as VPN. VPNs work by extending a private network across the internet. It allows the user to essentially alter their location and their IP address. Thank you. Hello everybody, my name is Charlotte from Class 9E and my exhibition topic is obesity. I've created a website and its name is Healthy From Young. So what is obesity? Obesity is the abnormal or excessive fat accumulation that presents a risk to health. Obesity can be measured through BMI, which is also known as body mass index, by calculating our weight in kilograms divided by the square of our height in meters. A BMI below 18.5 is considered underweight, over 25 is overweight, and a BMI over 30 is obese. In America, 13.4% of children from 2 to 5 years old are obese, 20.3% among kids of 6 to 11 years, and 21.2% among 12 to 19 years old are obese. 
An estimated 6.6 .6 million children under the age of five and one in five adults is overweight in Asia. According to the COSI study, 14% of boys and 10% of girls are obese in places such as Italy, Austria, Greece, and Romania in Europe. These are some of the main causes of obesity. Number one is sugar. Added sugar intake leads to weight gain and increases body fat. Food and beverages that are high in sugar are usually low in protein and fiber, the nutrients that are needed for the body so you feel full. Number two is fat. Good fat is present in nuts, vegetable oils, peanut, or almond butters and avocado fat, which contains monounsaturated fat, which improves blood cholesterol level, as well as decreases risk for cardiovascular disease. Bad fat is present in butter, margarine, and beef or pork, which are potentially harmful for your health. Number three is lack of exercise. Most of people's jobs require sitting behind a desk and people rely on cars and other transport methods rather than walking or cycling. If you are not active, the unused energy provided by the food will be stored in the body as fat. Number four is advertisement. Children watch advertisements every day through TV or any other online media. There are many unhealthy foods which are shown through advertisements and uh, this gives off a wrong message that these celebrities are cool, pretty and fit because they consume these unhealthy foods and drinks. Obesity doesn't happen overnight, it develops after some time. Eating excessive amounts of processed and unhealthy fast food, not exercising adequately, having a high alcohol intake, drinking too many sugary drinks like soda and comfort eating when having a low self-esteem can lead to obesity. Unhealthy eating habits run in some families. When a certain eating habit is shown upon you since young, there is a high possibility that it will be continued to adulthood. And these are some of the more important effects of obesity. Number one is risk of stroke. Obesity leads to high blood pressure, which is the leading cause of stroke. Number two is diabetes. Obesity can cause a failure in processing sugar in our body, causing diabetes. Number three, increased risk of heart attack. High blood pressure, blood sugar, and cholesterol can harden arteries and increase risk of getting a heart attack. Number four is organ failure. Excess fat can build around liver, which can lead to liver failure. Diabetes and high blood pressure can lead to chronic kidney disease and other things like cancer. Thank you. My name is David Christian Scheller of Class 90E. I will be presenting my slideshow for the ninth grade annual online exhibition, Electronic Commerce Within a Post-Pandemic Environment. Statement of Inquiry. Electronic commerce within a post-pandemic environment should serve as a crucial informational backdrop for a variety of subject groups to acknowledge. Conventional retail has been disrupted by the COVID-19 pandemic, which has intensified the trend towards electronic commerce. The set of slides examines an explanatory background for the aspects of this transition drawing directly from consumer behavioral analysis, developing COVID-19 research, and the environmental-induced limitations. In a dynamic marketing context, a company or business's level of preparation could therefore assess its overall longevity and stability. Technological, operational, and regulatory readiness will also be used to evaluate their developmental stance within e-commerce competency. Though through electronic commerce, revenues do not appear to be accelerating as rapidly as one would anticipate, However, there are a few exceptions, that being a subscription and convenience-based services with, which have seen substantial sales and conversion increases in the recent time frame. Several current developments such as e-commerce, outsourced automation, work-from-home practices, and generalized technology are now seeing immense prominence. Analysts suggest we won't see a return to normalcy of consumption patterns in most of these fields even after at the epidemic concludes. The development of electronic commerce has resulted in an increase in the numerical rate of digital financial services available to consumers and businesses from non-financial companies and have increased offering services such as digitized payment, credit, and insurance at the point of purchase, a trend identified as embedded finance. Several digital outlets have emerged in developing markets such as Africa, Asia, and South America, introducing new business strategies and assisting in the broader landscape's competitiveness. Furthermore, the recession may present opportunistic incentives for second-generation specialized platforms that serve segments of the market that are commonly underserved by the large e-commerce platforms. Within the second week of March, supermarket e-commerce flourished when consumers went online to purchase certain items that weren't available in their local retail grocery stores. When contrasted to countries with low smartphone monetary penetration and or underdeveloped agency infrastructure, the benefits of digitized payments become apparent. 
the impact of COVID-19 hasn't been regarded equally across generations. The consumers of various ages adjusting to the outbreak in distinctive perspectives. Customers are constantly altering their purchasing behavior as a result of their attempts to adjust to unpredictable circumstances with little footholds. Alongside the prospect of business owners dealing with a lot of the same ambiguity while striving to meet the demands of clients and oneself, the reaction to the continuously shifting scenario can vary depending on the business and target audience. Here are the OPVL MLA8 formatted source citations. And this concludes my presentation. Good morning, teachers, supervisors. I'm Dishita from 9E. For today's exhibition, I'll be presenting the topic on poverty and gender inequality. So everybody has heard about these both topics, and I know it is a very common topic. So I know everybody will be familiar about it. Topics that will be discussed throughout the whole video are the problem, its facts, and solutions for both the problems. First, let's talk about the topic poverty. As we can see, the world is encountering a tipping point on its battle against poverty. There are right now 39 fragile states that the World Bank characterizes as countries with undeniable degrees of institutional and social fragility and affected by war and conflict. They're home to just 1 billion individuals, 335 million of which live in outrageous poverty in 2020. This implies that while most stable nations can expect the finish of outrageous poverty, over 33% of the populace in fragile state will now live in outrageous poverty. Here's a, sim here's a simple diagram which shows how the rest of the world is declining with poverty, but fragile states aren't. Geographically, poverty is increasingly concentrated in Africa, and success in ending poverty globally will largely depend on African and other fragile states. Now, we are going to be talking about gender inequality. The chart is mostly talking about what each country thinks about it. Like fragile countries, they give men more opportunities than women. And in the rest of the world, excluding fragile countries, both men and women are given the equal opportunities. Here are some of the facts that talks both about the global poverty and gender inequality. Now we're going to be talking about the most important, its solutions. First, let's talk about poverty. Improving administrations to clean water can imply that the individuals who live in rural areas will save time strolling to their closest water point. Satisfactory medical care alternatives for all go connected at the hip with this arrangement and address a bigger requirement for governments to offer the fundamental social insurances and administration to keep their citizens healthy and give them affordable, or good treatment and the other we can do is give them some money here we can provide them with good money now let's talk about some solutions for gender inequality by having an equal presence of women in politics or leadership positions, the interests and values of females will be better represented on the political level. For many women, it is hard to achieve economic success and move up to the socioeconomic scale. Throughout the whole world, women work for long hours for unpaid domestic jobs. In some places, females do not even have the right to own land and, or earn an income and progress their careers due to job discrimination. The Women Internship and Economic Empowerment signed into law in January 20, 2019 is one initiative that is aimed at removing several of these barriers through some policy objectives. These are some of the basic points that will help overcome the poverty and also help in gender inequality. Thank you.
Good morning, everyone. My name is Fatima from grade 9 and my topic is customer service. What is customer service and why it is important? Customer service is the support you offer your customers, both before and after they buy and use your product or service. That helps them have an easy and enjoyable experience with you. Offering amazing customer service is important if you want to retain customers and grow your business. Different types of customer service. Phone customer service. Phone customer service is a communication through a phone between a company assistant and a customer. Email customer service. Email customer service is when a customer can send their question at any point of the day or night. On-site customer service. On-site customer service is that when customers don't have to leave their home or their workplace for some help, the assistant will come to them. Live chat customer service. Live chat customer service allows the assistant to be in constant communication with all of their customers. Social media customer service. Social media customer service is a service provided by media channels from the internet like Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Thank you. Good morning, teacher and supervisor. My name is Gwyneth, and I'll be discussing about my topic, deforestation. So what is deforestation and why has it become one of the largest issue in global land use? Well, first, let's start by with the definition of deforestation. Deforestation is the activity of clearing large area of land for another use. It has become a serious environmental concern since it results in loss of biodiversity, disturbance in the water cycle, damage to natural habitats, and soil erosion. Deforestation is also a major contributor to climate change and global warming. So what are the causes of deforestation? The most common pressure causing deforestation are agriculture use, housing, fuel, furniture, and paper. Agriculture trees are cut down to provide land for cultivation and agriculture. People cut down trees in order to provide land for houses, building, factories, and even to make furniture and paper. As for the natural causes, deforestation can be caused by forest fire, flooding, climate change, and drought. Therefore, after knowing all these negative impacts, deforestation has to be stopped. What can we do about deforestation? Well, there are three basic things we can do about it. First, we can plant trees. Planting trees can help to combat global warming because trees absorb carbon dioxide or CO2. Second is to use less paper. It was stated that 2 million of trees are cut every day just to supply paper demand. To decrease your contribution to loss of forests, you can reduce the use of paper. This will decrease in the demand. Thirdly is to use sustainable wood products. In this way, you can help reduce the demand for more logging, especially illegal logging. Personally, to reduce the activity of cutting down trees, I've come up with a unique solution. I've decided to create a product made of recycled cardboard so to make book covers and box packaging. This activity can help in decrease need to cut more trees and to support paper cardboard recycling and reduce the amount of waste entering landfills. Thank you for listening and hope you have a great day. Good morning, everyone. My name is Hugo and I'll be covering the topics of overcoming mental adversity and have attempted to depict it using interpretive art. The mental adversity being clinical depression. Now, there are a lot of clinical depressions, but in my presentation, I'd just like to uh, mention one of them, dysthymia. A chronic depressive disorder previously known as dysthymia is one of major types of depression that can last for two years or longer. One main cause of dysthymia can be rooted all the way back to childhood. From the earliest years of life, relationships with others shape how our brain grows and develops. 
early relationships characterized by violence and neglect typically have a long-term impact on children, causing mental health problems in the future. Which brings us to our next slide, overcoming. Confrontations. According to the National uh, Institute of Mental Health, it takes the average person suffering with a mental illness over 10 years to ask for help. So if you know someone struggling with clinical depression, encourage them gently to seek out therapy, which could be family and friends. And in this case, the most important one, very effective treatments from therapists and psychologists. My last slide is the portrayal using interpretive art. Interpretive art is a type of art that depicts messages, ideas, and meaning in a piece using symbols, colors, and abstractions. Below are some examples of interpretive art pieces by Deborah Koff and Deanna Cox. Um, the one on the right is my product for this exhibition. I tried to portray mental instability, though personally I have never experienced anything like depression. So I did what I thought made sense here. And while, while also referencing people with, that have experience with these mental illness, uh, this is basically a guy in a toilet seat. Toilet might seem like an absurd setting. I mean, in hindsight, I would have picked a better setting. Uh, but my reasoning behind this is that a toilet is a very personal space. You can lock the doors and yourself from all your problems. They're kind of like a mental sanctuary. And I figured I could use that to represent someone's mental state of mind, where in my product, this man who shelters himself in his sanctuary is still distressed. The light on the left of him was supposed to be uh, a butterfly or a cricket, uh, actually, to represent metamorphosis. This is significant to the overcoming factor here. Metamorphosis is uh, in this case, it's the light, uh, the embodiment of the man's want and desire to get over this mental struggle. But that is only my own interpretation of my own work. You can, it's very open to interpretations since it's an interpretative art. art. This is my bibliography. Thanks for listening. Teachers, teachers, um, this is in Yong Choi 9E, and this is my PPD about how can racism and discrimination impact the modern society. What is racism and discrimination? Racism is erroneous belief that some are in higher ranking determined by the genetic traits such as skin color and race. Discrimination is unjust or prejudicial treatment of different categories of people or things, especially on the grounds of race, age, or gender. The cause of racism and discrimination. Racism, people learn by anything their society and cultures teaches them. Majority of people assume that it's always the parents are the one who's supposed to be taught their children not to be racist. Discrimination. Some negative stereotypes, insecurities, and weakness can cause discrimination. The negative impacts of racism and discrimination. Number one, mental health. Racism can cause depression, stress, emotion distress, anxiety, PTSD, which stands for post-traumatic stress disorder, and even suicidal thoughts. Discrimination can make people feel devalued, dehumanized, disrespected, with which results frustrations, anxiety, and depression. <clears throat> Education. Negative stereotypes can impact how a teacher perceives their learning ability, engagement in school activities, and the way they interpret students' behavior choices. Lack of school resources such as school funding could indicate racially biased policies underserved some communities. According to the research, black and brown students are poorly, poorly funded and had inadequate learning opportunities, which can contribute to achievement gaps and huge numbers of differences in academic perfor 
performance across racial lines. Discrimination in terms of education can involve stress and PTSD. Students who are being discriminated have higher chance to have negative attitudes and lower academic motivation and performance, even dropping out of school. Business. Racism can stifle creativity, which reduce diversity. Companies that didn't have enough diversity were almost 30% more likely to underperform on profitability. Without racism, employees are more interested in learning excellence and connecting with others. It can also affect psychological safety for employees, which results disengagement and lower productivity. Discrimination can have an impact on the commercial reputation of a business, productivity, performance, staff commitment, and attraction and retention of skilled staff. Survey results of GMI students. Here are some survey results from my school friends. Lastly, how to cope with racism and discrimination. Number one, at home. Encourage and value diversity and foster a sense of cultural pride. Make it known that racism and discrimination are against the law, is unacceptable, and no one deserves to be treated disrespectfully. Discuss them and encourage conversation about its effect and impacts. Number two, at school. Get in touch with the teacher to discuss your concerns and ask what can be done to stop the racial bullying and discrimination. If there is racist bullying or discrimination going on, encourage them to report it to a teacher or counselor. Lastly, help kids work out ways of dealing with the, social, with the situation that makes them feel more in control and safe in the short term. Thank you. Selamat pagi hari ini saya akan menceritakan cerita saya yaitu perundungan di sekolah. Apa itu perundungan? Perundungan atau bullying adalah perilaku tidak menyenangkan baik secara verbal, fisik ataupun sosial di dunia nyampun maupun dunia maya. Perundungan juga membuat seseorang merasa tidak nyaman. Sakit hati dan tertekan baik dilakukan oleh perorangan ataupun kelompok. Kenapa ada perundungan di sekolah? Siswa diganggu karena banyak alasan. Kadang-kadang mereka diganggu karena mereka berbeda atau karena mereka pintar atau populer. Statistik pegang pengganggu sekolah. 29 dilaporkan diganggu di ruang kelas. Sementara 29% melaporkan diganggu di lorong atau di loker mereka. Penyakit mental seperti apa yang dapat diganggu oleh siswa. Diganggu dapat menyebabkan reaksi stres dramatik termasuk gangguan stres. Empat hasil kesehatan mental utama diinfektasi. Depresi, kecemasan, bunuh diri, melakukan diri sendiri, gangguan psikotik. Apa yang dapat menyebabkan perundungan? Hal ini dapat menyebabkan cedera fisik, masalah sosial, masalah emosional. Ketika itu serius, itu juga dapat menyebabkan kematian oleh siswa bunuh diri. Morning. My name is Keitaro Indrajit from 9E, and my topic is self-acceptance. I chose this topic because people having low self-esteem and hating themselves is a global problem. People these days tend to have low self-esteem because of society's standards in social media. Without having self-acceptance, it can cause depression, mental illnesses, and even worse, suicide. Suicidal rates have been skyrocketing in in young people, as you can see in this graph. Without it can also cause lack of productivity because you would spend too much time questioning your work and hating yourself rather than doing something productive. 
a wise man once said, self-love isn't selfish, it's important, anonymous. Here are some ways to gain self-acceptance. Embrace what makes you unique. Let go of the things you can't change. Identify your strengths. Set realistic goals and create a plan to meet them. Celebrate your accomplishments. Avoid people and things that challenge your self-acceptance. Think positively. Find someone that would support you and someone who you can share your thoughts and feelings to. Be kind to yourself. And finally, try a new activity to learn more about yourself and what you enjoy. And now I'll be showing you the product, which is a song I self-composed and wrote. I'll be presenting it with a pre-recorded audio of me singing while playing the piano. Thank you so much for listening. And here are the bibliography. Hello everybody. My name is Ketaro Joseph. I'm from 9E. Today I'll be discussing about coal. Should we mine for coal? Because coal is very precious to the business industries and we need coal for electricity. But at the same time, it is not good for the environment. Here's my IB profile and let's start. What is coal? Coal is a flammable or brownish black sedimentary rock with a high carbon and hydrocarbon content. Since coal takes millions of years to form, it is known as a non-renewable energy source. Plants that existed hundreds of millions of years ago preserve energy in coal. It's the most important energy source for electricity generation and also forms an essential fuel for the production of steel and cement. A negative characteristic of coal, however, is that it can be labeled as the most polluting energy source due to its high proportion of carbon. Other vital energy sources, such as the natural gas, are less polluting but significantly more exhaustive and more susceptible to price fluctuation on the world market. Therefore, the world industries have increasingly shifted their focus to coal. What is going on in the coal industry? For the past 10 years, the United States of America are in demand for coal, about 731 billion and 71 million of coal consumption yearly. Around 1 billion of coal needed to charge one country, not to mention other countries that needs more coal, such as Russia and China. The demand for coal means we need to mine more coals Mining itself takes huge amount of area, which means more animal and human have to migrate or move into a different city for them to live. How does the coal industry help in country's economy? Extractive industries such as coal mining establish the Indonesian economy, causing large fluctuation in the balance of payment and the exchange rate. The impact of this fluctuation also hinders the long term of development of higher value added industry by diverting and discouraging initial capital investment. At present Indonesia, is suffering because international coal markets are weak. Systematic reason, including, most importantly, China's aggressive effort to reduce coal consumption means that prices are unlikely to recover anytime soon. Why is it so hard to quit mining for coals? Because coal is a powerful energy to supply these countries. Millions of tons of it are buried beneath the ground. Powerful corporations backed by powerful government are racing to expand their market before it is too late, often through subsidies. It is also profitable for banks. 
large nation power grid were designed to handle it. Coal plants can be so far away for policymakers to deliver low-cost electricity while maintaining control of their own power. It has become a gleaming source of corruption in certain nations. The danger from mining coal, accident, collision, and mine failure put miner in great danger. Every year, approximately 4,000 to 6,000 workers in China are killed in underground mining accidents. Miners are also exposed to poisonous fumes, coal tar, and toxic metals, putting them at risk for lung diseases and pneumoconiosis and silicosis. Pollution of the air and water is a problem in communities around mine. They have shorter lifespan and higher prevalence of lung cancer, heart disease, and cardiovascular disease, and kidney disease. Asset mine drainage is one of the most severe consequences of coal mining. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I am Kara of 9E, and today I'm going to present my exhibit on how does COVID-19 affect the shopping behaviors of consumers. With the pandemic continuously roaming the world and with no clear ends to its presence in sight, individuals and businesses have learned to adapt their practices to what is required by the new normal. <laughs> Some sectors crashed as people all of a sudden retreated to their homes and drastically changed their daily routines. There have been sectors that have actually thrived during this pandemic. Those who are successful, including the ones that are simply in the right time, for example, Zoom, but some thrive because the strategies and actions they take differently in adapting to COVID situation. By nature, people will put safety as their number one priority, and this decision impacts everything. People used to go for physical stores, especially for grocery products. But within days, people are pushed to take different approach, focusing on safety and buying essentials only in a discounted price. Naturally, some categories are performing better than others. For example, vitamins is performing really well because people put more attention on their health and some categories are collapsing like travel or even not to the extreme but still suffering cosmetics. Because people wear masks, no one puts lipstick on anymore. On the left are businesses that suffer the negative impact and on the right are the businesses who thrive during COVID-19. Generally, business that adapt fast into digitalization has minimum impact or even make a huge success as small businesses with limited capital network and run the business traditionally got a negative impact. Go digital, sell online, we heard about these things frequently, but to thrive is not that easy. It's a very crowded digital world out there. I learned through researching from white papers, journals, and news, these are the three things we need to have at the minimum to survive when pivoting your business digitally due to COVID. Online is a huge space. The internet actually proves to be a bigger space than the actual world. These are the seven, these are the 11 steps of having sustainable and successful business. And the key is really beyond just traditional selling, but making use of data and technology. Imagine having to list down and track and communicate to all your customers manually. It's close to impossible. But in the digital era, when shopping happens in the online world, access to data is becoming key. Even People even compare data to the next oil. Artificial intelligence helps companies to target right consumers in accurate, fast way, making marketing activity become personalized, as if the brand is talking to you in the most personal and influence your shopping behavior. This is the example. Have you ever browsed for Nike shoes? And suddenly, when you open e-news, YouTube, or browse Instagram, 
an advertisement of Nike pops up in your window, or suddenly you receive a promotion from Nike, yes, you are being targeted as your data is being captured. Shopping behavior after COVID will remain as people learn the convenience of the digital world. Thank you. Hi, my name is Krisha Mobani from Grade 9E, and my product for this exhibition is a poetry compilation under the global context, personal and cultural expression, exploring the strands, the way in which we discover and express ideas, feelings, cultures, beliefs, and values. Throughout the making of Smile Into Your Future, I aim to answer my critical questions. The rawness of my poetry was secured by a first-hand course with a certified counselor. The notes I had revisited were based on the progress I had displayed over an eight-week journey, and to ensure I was able to showcase how I felt at a certain time period, I structured my poems in a way that would allow easier analysis of the progression of my mental attitude. Five volumes, each representing a different stage. Enjoy! The tip of my tongue is bitter and burnt from all the nights I spend staring at a reflection chanting the words, I love you, over and over and over again. For it seemed like a tangled yet reassuring fantasy to cower behind whenever I questioned if I did. But when you repeat something over and over and over again, you realize you forget what it means as syllables suddenly sound the same. It's three in the morning. I'm staring into oblivion, studying the stains on my ceiling. It looks like someone sat up there with a cup of coffee, neglecting the use of a coaster. Lying in the absence of alarms, life, a repetitive cycle on an eight-hour snooze. I'm drumming my fingers to the tick-tock of my clock. My mother says it's the devil's hour. I didn't know what she meant until it wouldn't let me fall asleep until I was left feeling paralyzed, until I was dragged in by my feet, like a moth thrown into a candlelit room, and when I gather every ounce of might, I am drawn to a flame, a light, a truth. But when I burn my wings on the very thing that lit up a room, the candle I once thought was mine burns out. I could scream until my shadow walked away from me, but even then, no one else can save someone trapped within their own mind. My friends tell me I resemble a cloud. That's where my nickname came from. To them, I might have looked liberated and tender. I wish I could agree, but that isn't all it is. I resemble a cloud in ways you wouldn't think I do. I am the embodiment of a labyrinth. A labyrinth I can't find my way out of. On my shoulders, I bear 1.1 million pounds. A cloud's corners are its most alluring parts, yet I am indifferent to the beauty of an edge. And when you reach up on your tiptoes and try to hold a cloud, you embrace nothing real. When the feeling settles in, I feel it in my gut, like a shard of glass on my neck threatening to pale me of blood. When I feel like pouring my heart out to the one seemingly closest to me but not know how or why. When the chatter in my ear hints I am not alone, the distant beats my heart makes tell me differently. My breath is stolen as I struggle to frame a simple sentence because the burden on my soul may be much more complex. I don't know why I feel this way, and that's okay. We'll figure it out. Together. Slowly, I'm getting the hang of it. Slowly, to fall deeper in love with me. I learn to stand in content and serenity because appreciation ages like wine. With time. Smiling at my reflection, I conquer the three and climb toward a ten. I grow to know who I am. I am a mosaic of every mistake I've made, every joke I've shared, every habit I've developed. I am a reflection of people I love and the people who love me. I often mistake these cracks for wounds I see now. These are the pieces glued together that make me, me. My name is Lynn, and for my exhibition product, I chose to make a painting. My global context is personal and cultural expression. 
The global issue I'm focusing on is the theme of enduring and overcoming, with a specific focus on feelings of stagnation and dissatisfaction in one's life. This has been heightened during the long pandemic of COVID-19, where people more than ever have reported a heightened state of these sentiments. Research conducted by Harvard Medical School showed that expressing oneself through art can help alleviate depression, anxiety, and even cancer. And even when you don't create such art, the existence of art that tackles such topics are widely agreed to bring a positive impact by validating the viewer's own personal feelings and connecting with the large community through universal emotions. Butterflies often represent change and metamorphosis. Here, I use them as the main motif to represent the theme of overcoming. Sunflowers always face the direction of the sun, so I use so them to convey the theme of optimism and looking forward to a brighter side. The metals of flowers are used to represent liberation and freedom. The person in the focal point of the piece is in a closed off pose. I wanted to create a form that resembled a cocoon to represent stagnation. The scratches on their back conveys the frustration a person may feel during these periods of stagnation, but the rip that they create in the end after enduring the pain is, is one that finally frees them and allows them to change and overcome. I painted this piece on A3 using watercolor because watercolor allows for more chaotic which I believe embodies the freedom and liberating nature of the piece. And I, edit, and I edited the piece digitally as well to combine multiple mediums of art. I chose to create this product because I wanted to express my personal feelings and connect with others through art and something tangible. And here's the visible impact of my product, shown through comments from my followers. Art can start conversations in a more interesting way than just writing one's opinion because it's more open-ended and allows for many different interpretations. Good morning, Sir A.P. Singh, supervisor, coordinators, teachers, parents, and my fellow friends. My name is Lindsay and today I'll be presenting my product about bullying. So what is bullying? Bullying is an unwanted, aggressive behavior in school that happens among children that involves a real or perceived power imbalance. The behavior is repeated or has the potential to be repeated over time. There are many types of bullying, but the main ones include verbal bullying, social bullying, and physical bullying. Bullying can occur anywhere. It can happen during school hours, after school hours, including outside of the school premises. Bullying can have a huge toll on a person both physically and mentally. Because of bullying, some kids are likely to experience depression, anxiety, low self-esteem, health issues, and etc. A way to help someone who is being a target of bullying is helping them and standing up for them when they're being hurt. Teaching kids to respect everyone around them and tell a trusted adult if the bullying keeps happening. Now I'm going to show you my animation about bullying. This is my research plan to make my poster and animation, this is my storyboard of my animation, and these are the programs and applications I use to make my products along with the bibliography for my information. Thank you. Good morning, dear principal, supervisor, coordinator, teachers, parents, and my dear friends. I am Manraj from Grade 9 E. Today, I will be presenting the effects complex supply chain on labor exploitation. As more and more businesses grow, they, they are there are more demands of certain products. These demands will be fulfilled if there is enough supply. Supplying is a simple process of providing either ready-made goods or 
raw materials to produce the products. There are three stages of supply chain. First stage is called the procurement stage. The first process is collecting raw materials from any resource. The second process is inbound logistics. This is when we ship the raw materials to the warehouse. The third process is storing goods in the warehouse according to their time. The second stage is called the operation management stage. The first process is manufacturing. This is where raw material is turned into the final product. The fifth stage is outbound warehouse, where all the products are stored for free. Outbound logistics. This is delivering the finished product to their destination. The last stage is consumer. The seventh and last process is called customers or when the final products are used by the end user or the customer. Which supply chain starts exploiting labor? As a business expands, it needs to cope up with the supply needed for the demand of the product. Because of this demand, more pressure is added to the manufacturing process. process. And because of the pressure, labor suppliers start to exploit them by paying low wages, not providing enough food, not providing a good place to sleep. A study conducted by Migration Data Portal.org showed that out of all the regions or continents, Middle East has the most migrant workers, keeping in mind how small they are. There are at least 22,796,000 migrant workers in Middle East, and there are at least 2,036,000 laborers being exploited only in the Middle East. This is roughly 1.24% migrant workers in the world are being exploited only in the Middle East. A study done by UNESCO stated that there was an increase in Southeast Asian labor workers being supplied to the Middle East. In 1999, Bangladesh had 103,814 India 139,861, Nepal 83,020, Pakistan 115,520, and now and in 2016 there was a huge jump when Bangladesh had 555,881, India 781,000, Nepal 499,620, and Pakistan 6,5671. In these years, there has been a huge jump, either multiplied of the number in 1999. A study done by the International Labour Organization, also known as ILO, showed that 15% fall victim after moving within the country, 29% after crossing international borders, 56% in their place of origin. A simple example for this case is the issue of labor exploitation in Qatar to prepare the Qatar World Cup 2022. The Qatar 2022 World Cup is one of the biggest cup in the world where millions of fans watch football. The Ras Abu Dhab Stadium, Qatar, is the biggest stadium. This is the biggest stadium in Qatar, which is being built by ACOM in association with Zaha Hadid Architects. This stadium's construction started in 2014. And in 2019, it was inaugurated. This stadium can seat around 40,000 people. But this stadium might be bigger stadiums. But it seems impossible to make a stadium in the Middle East. And also surrounded by deserts without manpower, even if we have advanced technology techniques. As the deadline grew closer, more pressure was added to the labor suppliers to make sure that the laborers, the laborers will do the work as fast as possible, no matter how. Because of this pressure, the supplier will start to exploit the laborers. A government data compiled in an investigation showed that there were at least 5,927 5, deaths between the years. Additionally, the Pakistani embassy in Doha showed that a further 824 Pakistani citizens died because of this construction. How to solve labor exploitation in countries? First is smartphones. In the 20th century, everyone has a smartphone. The laborers can take out their phone and immediately contact authorities or national embassies. Second is to go to court. By going to court, most businesses and suppliers will stop exploiting laborers. There is a 
design in the media, number 13 of 2003, emphasizing on manpower. It's mostly protecting laborers who are being exploited. Thank you. Hello, Mr. A.P. Singh, supervisors, coordinators, teachers, parents, and my dear friends. Welcome to Learning about Osmosis, and this presentation is going to be presented by me, Michelle Tupang, and I'm from grade 19. As, as you can see, there are arrows above me, and this is where my webcam is going to be placed. So let's move on to the contents. So the contents are the first, which is what are cells? The second, cell membranes and different solutions, which can affect the concentration of the plant cell. The third one is going to be what is osmosis and how does it work? So let's move on to cells, number one. So what are cells? Cells can be known for the building blocks of life and there exist trillions of cells in our body, the environment, as well as plants. Moving on, that there are two types of cells, which are the animal cells and plant cells. But what makes animal cells and plant cells different is that plant cells has a cell wall. Let's move on into the second part, which is about cell wall and cell membrane. I will be explaining about cell wall and cell membrane. So the cell wall is only found in a cell plant which is which can also be called as a fully permeable membrane and this allows all molecules including the smaller and larger molecules to pass through this wall as well as supporting the plant cell from bursting when plant cell gains more water through osmosis while the cell membrane is kind of a barrier where it controls what goes in and out of the plant cell, which means that not all molecules can go in, which means that only smaller molecules such as oxygen can enter through the cell membrane while larger molecules cannot. So there are two types of, there are three types of solutions, but before I start about the solutions, I'm going to talk about what are solute and solvent. Solute are like salt, sugar, glucose, solution, etc. while solvent are liquids such as water. So the three solutions is isotonic solution, hypotonic solution, and hypertonic solution. Hypotonic solution is when solute is less and there are more solvent, while hypertonic is when there are more solute and there is uh, less uh, solvent. Moving on, I will be talking about osmosis and how it is connected with cell wall, cell membranes, and the solutions that I have explained. So this is the explanation of what is osmosis. Osmosis is the movement of molecules from the region of their higher concentration to a region of their lower concentration down a concentration gradient. So how does it work on a plant cell? I will give you all some time to read it. You can pause the video and I will be moving on into the diagram solutions and plant cells so we can see there's the hypotonic and isotonic hypertonic solution i was talking about before so when it's related to the hypotonic solution when the concentration outside of the plant cell is lesser then that means the water from the lesser solution is going to move into the plant cell while it's vice versa for the hypertonic solution and this is my bibliography. And thank you so much, everyone, for listening to my exhibition. I hope you have learned something new about the depths of plants. Have a great day ahead. Goodbye. Thank you. Selamat pagi. Saya, Nicholas, dari kelas 9E. Hari ini. Saya akan bercerita tentang perjuangan seorang anak bernama Felix yang ingin bersekolah. Saat ini Felix di kelas 9, jarak antara rumah dan sekolahnya. Sangat jauh, harus menyeberang lautan dengan perahu motor. Selain itu, Felix dan kawan-kawannya harus berjalan kaki setiap hari. Menuju sekolah, kondisi jarak tempuh ini membuat Felix tidak bisa bolak-balik antara sekolah dan rumahnya. Kondisi sekolahnya pun terbatas, namun dekat dan semangat Felix tetap kuat. Cita-cita Felix ingin menjadi tentara dan membangun sekolah di desanya. Jadi, teman-teman, 
jangan sia-siakan sekolah ya. ya. Hello everyone, my name is Shudian. I'm from 9E. Today I'm going to explain about online class. Recently we are taking online class by pandemic COVID-19. So I choose my exhibition topic as online class. And also I made a short and simple animation for my presentation. I hope you like it. Yep, let's see. At first, I will introduce the funny experiences during the online class. Remember, it's not my behavior. I just got the story from online communication, some other one's experience. Then second, I will explain about the advantage of online class. Third, I will explain about the disadvantage of online class. And at last, uh, about if you still miss school and want to go to school again, we have to prevent corona, right? To prevent coronavirus, what should we have to do? So now, I'm bringing here several kind of behaviors of people. So let's see, what kind of person are you during your class? At first, there are kind of person who are always hungry during the class. I hear the one story. The girl was eating her snacks during the class loudly. And the fact is, she did unmute it. So what? Everyone in the class, even the teacher, was listening her eating sound. Maybe later, she should be very ashamed. A second kind of person is who never turn their cameras during their class. Even teachers keep asking to turn their cameras. During the online class, students are separated as two types. Who is studying hard during the class and who is not studying during the class. Just playing game or listening music, kind of that. So far, have you already think about what kind of person are you during the class? Then, let's go to the next part about advantage and disadvantage of online class. The advantage of online class is efficiency. Online learning offers teachers an efficient way to deliver lessons to students. Online learning has a number of tools such as videos, PDFs, and teachers can use all these tools as part of their lessons plans. And second, accessibility of time and place. One of the advantages of online education is that it allows students to attend classes from any locations of their choice. It also allows schools to reach out to the more extensive network of students. So, what is the disadvantage of online class? First, inability to focus on screens. Second, technology issues. Third, sense of isolation. Fourth, teacher training. The last one is manage screen time. Many parents are concerned about the health of having their children spend so many hours staring at the screen. So, a good solution to this would to be give their students plenty of breaks from the screen to refresh their mind and their body. As my conclusion, how to prevent COVID-19? Clean your hands always, then prevent droplets from spreading, wearing masks, covering colds and sneezes. Then also clean frequently touched objects and surfaces. And response if experiencing COVID-19 like symptoms. Thank you for listening to my presentation. Yeah. With the world has witnessed global and economic turbulence, one sector that has seen a major boom, robotic manufacture. Hello everybody, I'm Rishabh Kirpalani from 9E, and today I will be talking to you about robots, the game changer in income in the pandemic, and how it is affecting the economy. My global context is scientific and technological innovations. What comes to your mind when you think of robots? Simplified work, lesser effort, but there's much more to it than you can think of. When unforeseen circumstances occur and the world goes through a pandemic, technology has come to man's aid. We have seen the impact of the pandemic on the life of the people and majorly in the business world and the economy. One sector that has seen a major upgrade is robot manufacture. Now, I will explain to you all how it has affected our economy. In the past few years, robots have been used to create goods and services, but now they are even more used extensively. Another area where we see major usage is in the hospitals. The major reason being is to reduce human interaction. The sale of disinfectant robots have gone up by 1000% in schools, hospitals, and other work areas. Here are some graphs. The economic structure is restructuring with the increased usage of robots. When new technology is created, it has pros and cons. It appears that robots are replacing workers, but that's not the truth. There are many more jobs that have been created. 
Robots are only bringing about structural unemployment. Let's take the case of miners who may lose their jobs because of robots. They may not fit into the new jobs creation, which means they have to upgrade their skills. Now, talking about professionals, for example, doctors. Doctors cannot be replaced by robots because robots only do mundane tasks like checking the temperature and checking the temperature and maintaining blood pressure. This gives doctors more time to interact with the patients. Moving forward, let us see how the production carried out by robots affects the cost of production. Robots work efficiently. They can carry out tasks of several workers. Hence, they bring down the cost of production. The consumers are benefited because this increases the disposable income and this increases their buying power. So we see robots are beneficial here. Now let's take a look at how they influence the standard of living. We have seen the costs of goods manufactured by robots are definitely lesser than those produced otherwise. Goods now cost much lesser, making them accessible to more consumers. Let's take the example of Starbucks. It presently employs people for their coffee sales, but if these people were replaced by robots, in the long run, the coffee would cost much lesser. So another benefit added, they enhance the standard of living of the people. Another impact is the inflation. As you see on the slide, they also bring down inflation. The robot cost is just a one-time investment, which brings down the overall cost in terms of wages of employees. Now, let's take a look at the demand and supply of robots. Initially, the cost of manufacturing robots were very expensive, but now with the availability of specialized expertise, the cost of producing robots is lower than and the supply has increased. These are the world's top leading manufacturers of robots, and these are some of the popular brands. While I was doing some research, I came across this picture, which captured my attention, the need of the hour. It was impressive to see how robots at graduation stu ceremonies of students at Japan. Looks like by the time we grow up for our graduation, this may be far too common. To conclude, even though robots have rapidly captured the economy, they cannot replace man's effort. They only complement it. We should definitely support the, and encourage the usage of robots as it has far too many impacts and all of them are positive. I have conducted a Google form survey. The questions are, are robots better substitutes than humans? Will the coming years demand highly skilled workers? Is there a fear of technological unemployment? Do you think robots will increase or decrease the cost of production? And if you're an entrepreneur, would you have robots working for you? The results are shown on the screen. This is my brochure. And these were the sites I have used for my research. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you have a great day ahead. Thank you. Hello, aku adalah Ryan dari kelas 9E. Hari ini aku akan membicarakan tentang polisi plastik. Apakah polisi plastik? Plastik adalah semacam bahan yang sangat berbahaya untuk alami karena plastik bisa tahan sampai beberapa ratus tahun untuk rusak. Mayoritas plastik yang terbuat menjadi sampah yang terbuang di laut. Makanya penggunaan plastik terlalu banyak sangat menyakitkan untuk alami karena itu bisa menghancurkan alami dan jutaan jenis binatang yang hidup termasuk manusia. Dan kita harus melakukan sesuatu sebelum terlalu lambat. Bali adalah salah satu tempat terpenuh dengan polusi di Indonesia. Ini adalah karena Bali adalah tempat yang sangat ramai dan sering dikunjungi oleh turis dari seluruh dunia. Plastik adalah barang yang sangat murah. Makanya turis memakai plastik karena tidak harus ditenteng dan bisa aja dibuang ke tong sampah. Selama bertahun-tahun, turis yang mengunjungi Bali mulai merendah karena reputasi pantai di Bali sudah rusak. Karena pantai penuh dengan sampah dan plastik yang membikinin itu 
tidak indah untuk dilihat. Seperti yang kita semua tahu, plastik akan tidak merusak dalam beberapa ratus tahun. Makanya kita harus berhenti memakai plastik untuk cegah dan merendahkan polusi plastik. Karena polusi makin banyak, ilmuwan akhirnya temukan solusi untuk merendahkan polusi dengan mengganti memakai plastik dengan kertas dari pohon atau memakai besi. Ini adalah bibliografi tentang website yang aku memakai untuk mencari informasi tentang topik ini. Terima kasih. Cyberbullying adalah penyalahgunaan internet untuk melecakkan, mengancam, mempermalukan, dan mengecek orang lain. Selamat pagi semuanya. Hari ini saya akan menulis tentang berita bullying di media sosial. Apa itu cyberbullying? Sebagian besar cyberbullying adalah bullying hanya terjadi di ponsel dan perangkat lain yang terhubung. Kebanyakan ahli setuju bahwa ini melibatkan pelecahan, berlang, dan beberapa jenis ketidakseimbangan, kekuasaan, dan ketika orang muda terlibat, biasanya ada hubungannya dengan apa yang terjadi dengan teman-teman di sekolah. Seberapa besar kemungkinan itu? Content for Disease Control melakukan bahwa 15% siswa sekolah menengah diintimidasi secara elektronik pada tahun 2017. Pusat penelitian cyberbullying memerkirakan sekitar 25% dari semua remaja mengalami cyberbullying. Bagaimanapun ini terlalu banyak, tetapi penting untuk dicatat bahwa kebanyakan remaja tidak menindas orang lain. Kami menunjukkan hal ini bukan untuk menimbulkan masalah serius, tetapi untuk menekankan bahwa bullying itu tidak baik. Apa saja tandanya? Seringkali tidak ada tanda, tetapi ada mungkinan pem- memperhatikan bahwa anak Anda mengalami kesusahan tidur, perubahan kebiasaan online seperti terus-menerus memeriksa media sosial, nilai menurun, tidak ingin pergi ke sekolah, perasaan tidak berdaya atau perunuran citra diri. Dalam kasus penindasan fisik, mungkin ada barang hilang yang rusak atau cedara. Apakah ada hukuman untuk cyberbullying? Kebanyakan sekolah menanggapi bullying secara serius dan akan mengambil tindakan untuk melawannya. Jika kamu mengalami cyberbullying oleh siswa lain, laporkan ke pihak sekolahmu. Orang-orang yang menjadi korban segala bentuk kekerasan, termasuk bullying dan cyberbullying, memiliki hak atas keadilan dan meminta pertanggungjawaban pelaku. Hukuman mengenai bullying khusus tentang cyberbullying masih cukup dan masih ada di mana-mana. Itulah news report yang saya tulis. Semoga bisa mengerti lebih tentang bullying di sosial media sehabis baca rapot ini. Terima kasih sudah mendengar. Hello everyone, my name is Tisha, and today I will be talking about my topic, which is the environmental effects of NFTs, and I will be showing you my product, which is a website created with Wix Website Builder. So, the reason why I chose this topic was because I come across it a couple of months ago, and I saw how people were supporting it on platforms such as Google and TikTok. However, Not many people were talking about its environmental effects, which I found out about through further research. This new technical innovation leaves behind heavy carbon footprint, which is a contributor in climate change and global warming. Through this website, I I aim to enlighten more people about the effects of this very new technical innovation and why this shouldn't be used and people should go for more environmental friendly alternatives. Here on my homepage, there are three buttons about info and environmental impacts. And upon pressing them, you come into a different page which talks about 
here talks about NFTs, a brief introduction. In simple terms, NFTs are digital assets, which can be anything, um, music, digital art, stickers, GIFs, images, anything. And they are mostly bought, sold, and traded amongst people, which is why it can get a little popular. It has gotten a bit popular. However, a lot of people still call the trend a bit stupid. Here, I have, I have dedicated an entire page onto describing and talking about the environmental impacts of NFTs, how the Ethereum blockchains, what NFTs are traded on, have been able to consume between a week to a year's worth of energy consumption. And it is a huge significant wastage of energy and also the amount of carbon footprint leaves behind gradually with more users buying and selling NFTs will make and have a bigger impact on the environment today. I've created this website in the hopes of enlightening people so they will be able to go for more suitable alternatives since our planet already is in a bad condition and global warming is already very significant. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Zeng Letian and I'll be presenting my online exhibition. My topic for this exhibition is how economy can affect the income globally. Moving on. Main question, how the economy can affect the income globally and annually. In a global perspective, yes, it changes dramatically and could shut down many ongoing businesses and loss of jobs. Since the company could not pay employee salary, this caused the country to have continuous demo and loss of delivery. 80% of Indonesian citizens spend their salary after the first week of receiving it. This statement tells us that people, people's salary varies a lot in the economy. What are the causes of recession in Indonesia? Everyone told to stay at home, which limits employees to go to their workplace or overall working. Falls in economy, which limits the trade and shipping that could reduce the income of company. Reduce in the income of company, which leads to unable to pay employee salary in some cases. Employees was forced to resign and was not paid, which resulted in several, several losses. The pandemic stopped skilled workforce to enter Indonesia, which resulted in traffic plans. Moving on, do we prioritize economy or health? Part one. This subject was commonly talked about in politics. Do we prioritize economy or health? If we prioritize economy first, we do not prioritize our economy, our country will fall in the recession. If we prioritize health more than economy, then our country will fall into a recession, which could result in demo since more people will suffer financially. A citizen once said, I risk my life working in the pandemic rather than die of hunger. This statement confronted citizens that they prioritize money more than health. If we prioritize health first, if we do not prioritize our health more than people, we will die from COVID and there will be a drop in population. If we prioritize economy more, there will be more people die each day and more people will be infected. But if we do not work, where will the money come from? How will we feed ourselves? Do we prioritize economy or health? What's your opinion? And what do you think is better a better choice? In my opinion, I think it would be better for us to prioritize our economy since we do not know when will this pandemic be over. We should follow, we should follow COVID-19 protocols and pray for the best. We cannot guarantee how long we will stay at home. In conclusion, I think we should prior, prioritize economy. Tell me what you think in the form below. Here are some graphs to show 
the economy before pandemic versus after the pandemic uh, in the pandemic. Here are my bibliography and sources. Here I come to the end of the, my presentation. Thank you for listening. Have a wonderful day. I move on to grade 9E. The exhibits put up by students of grade 9E under the care of class teacher Mr. Nitin, all subject teachers, supervisors, coordinators, and parents. Indeed, the African proverb it takes a village to educate a child. Angela Parikh, recyclable packaging. Yes, indeed, packaging has to be recyclable because if it is not so, it will cause pollution. Angela, yes, I agree with you. Good suggestion and a good topic. Ashima Gupta. To what extent did COVID-19 affect multinational companies? Oh, that's a big research, Ashima. Well, COVID-19 had different effects. Some multinational companies like Amazon and others benefited a lot and some really crashed. So Ashima, we appreciate your research. Why? Why? What happened? And Beverly Mariang, cruelty towards animals. Oh Beverly, I like your thinking, your caring nature. We have no right as human beings to be cruel towards animals. We have to put an end to it. Charlotte Young, obesity. It is a global problem and it has been slightly magnified because of the uh, home grounding of people due to coronavirus pandemic. Charlotte, I hope you come up with some great solutions. And David Scheller, e-commerce within a post-pandemic environment. All right, post-pandemic environment. Well, e-commerce has come to stay now. People's way of buying, people's way of dealing have shifted to quite an extent towards e-commerce. Well, we'll watch and wait, David, what your research says and what is the impact on e-commerce. It's become a new way of thinking now. And Dishita Maheshwari, poverty and inequality, a social problem. It exists from time immemorial, and we have still not been able to find solutions for these two problems, inequality and poverty. Whether it is developed countries like USA, Europe, Japan, or poverty in other parts of the world. The, it exists everywhere and inequality as well. So Dishita, we look forward to your research. Fatima, your topic is entitled Customer Service. Yes, in this world, customer service plays a very important role. Even for teachers, we are we have to look after our students that's our service and likewise in so many aspects of life well your topic is interesting fatima and gwenet lao deforestation why why are we cutting down trees why simple question because of man's greed and when man's greed comes in the Earth's climate changes, the Earth's nature changes. Gwyneth, I look forward to your research. Hugo Atmaya, you are dealing with the topic threat that globalization poses 
on local businesses and how the locals can overcome them. Yeah. Sometimes the big global houses, big business houses want to take over the business livelihoods of small traders, which is not fair according to, well, according to me, yes, and Hugo, according to you, well, we'll see that, because we don't, we don't have the right to tread on the weaker sections of society. It is surprising to note that some big business houses dealing with completely different topics suddenly are selling clothes, selling vegetables, taking over the entire trade. Well, Hugo, I look forward to your solutions. In Yong Choi, you are dealing with something which shouldn't be happening on earth. In 21st century, racism and discrimination. And these are real evils of society. And from time immemorial, people are indulging in this. Why? God has made all human beings equal. The same blood runs in everyone. But yet, some human beings indulge in these uh, vicious qualities of life. In Young, I appreciate your topic. Ji Woo Kim, you're dealing your topic bullying in school and you've chosen the language Bahasa. I appreciate Ji Woo. Bullying in school has to come to a stop. And basically, bullies are cowards. They should be dealt with firmly. Jeevu, if anyone bullies, according to me, should be reported immediately to his teachers and parents. That's what we are for. Therefore, to check these people. And Kitaro Indrajit, self-acceptance. Of course, each one is unique. We all have our great qualities which no one else has. And we should accept ourselves as we are. That's the way to go, Kitaro. Don't look at others, look at ourselves and make ourselves great. And Kera Ang, you're dealing with best way to advertise products before, during and after COVID-19. Okay, that's a pretty big business issue. And Kera, I look forward to your research. Krisha Mehbubani, smile into your future. Smile into your future, wonderful. Joy and effort. That's what it is, Krisha. Work very hard, but keep smiling. Don't be stressed. Wonderful. Leah Gyan Gyun, interpretive art theme of endurance and overcoming. Yes, art can say a thousand words through a simple presentation. Art is indeed a great value of life. Lindsay Felicia Putri, you asked a question. How does media change our perception of reality? It does, it does, Lindsay. Very good critical thinking. Media plays a role in, well, sometimes fooling our senses. Be critical thinkers, for Lindsay, always, always. I want GMI boys and girls to be critical thinkers, not to be fooled by media. Media is trying to change our paradigm of thinking. Manoj Sandhu. You are dealing with a topic which is very specific. Effect of complex supply chain on labor exploitation. Well, Manraj, I congratulate you for your research. Michelle Tupang, Osmosis and Plants. 
Indeed, it's a biological topic. Michel, we look forward to your research. Nicholas Sentoso, Education for the Poor. You are thinking like United Nations, like Secretary General of United Nations. Yes, indeed. If we have an educated world, it will be a better place for everyone. Lack of education leads to so many problems. And society should work to provide good education for all. Oh, Surian. Online classes. Oh my God. Yes, oh, Surian. Online classes have become a way of life now. And it requires a lot of discipline at home in us and it's a new paradigm new way of looking at things but indeed it has its plus points also we can now discuss amongst ourselves as students four students five students can get together on zoom and discuss a difficult mathematics problem and find out solutions that's the advantage which we are learning from it. And I think uh, in university also it will help. But face to face education is also very important. And by the grace of God, that day is not far. Probably then we'll have hybrid classes online as well as face to face. And Rishabh Kirpalani. You say the breakthrough in technology in times when unforeseen circumstances hit the world. Indeed, man has to adapt and adopt himself. Adaptation. When circumstances change, adopting new ideas. That's what life is and that's what good education is. Finding out the best in the worst of times. Ryan Sangalo, the effect of plastic on sea and marine life. Oh, Ryan, that's a raw nerve in this on planet Earth. Who has put plastic into the ocean? Not the fish, not the animals. It's human beings, us. And we don't seem to care, we're still doing it. And if marine life gets damaged, it will eventually damage the entire cycle and we will also be affected. Ryan must tell the United Nations to be more firm on this. See you in Park. Bullying in social media. And you're dealing with an Bahasa Indonesia. Siyon, congratulations. In social media. Yeah, cyberbullying. We have to put a stop to this. We have to put a stop to this. There is cyber police. There are parents. There are teachers. We are all working in unison on this. So don't allow yourselves to be bullied. And Tisha Anand, NFTs and its environmental if impact. Well, Tisha, I wish you all the best for your topic. And Zheng Li Tian, Zheng Li Tian, how economy affects the income globally. Yes, it's uh, the spending that builds the economy. And uh, it's related and uh, there are no expenses, the economies start crashing. It's an analysis, Zeng. Work on it. Maybe you'll become a great banker. So I congratulate entire grade 90 for the wonderful topics. Must be shared with IB and on our website to show the world how great our students are.